Greetings, everyone. It's time for Stratomatic Baseball. Spokane Steve with you. We got a ball game today, Atlanta Braves at Houston Astros. And we got some good stuff from Dan Hall there. Must have made some comments before the stream. Longtime Stratomatic player. Yeah, set up a neighborhood league. God, didn't we all do that? That was the best. We had an eight-team league when I was a kid. Eventually it dwindled down to four, and then it kind of petered out by the early 90s. And hello to Kenyon Gray, and welcome. Well, let's take a look at our pitchers today. We've got Wade Blassen game going for Atlanta. Larry Durker for Houston. Blassen game a pretty high ERA that year, 5.32, 12 starts. Durker had a very nice year, nice ratio, 3.18. Let's see what they've done in the replay. Well, I can tell you they've both been splendid for their ball clubs so far. Blassen game has made three starts. He's 2-1 and one with a 3.66 ERA and one complete game, 20 innings, 18 hits allowed. Only six strikeouts, but he's been very effective for the Braves. Durker, three starts, 2-0, 2.49 ERA, one complete game, 22 innings, only 14 hits allowed, and 11 strikeouts. Nineteen sixty six. God, think about that for a minute. Think about this. Roll over the number twenty twenty four in your head for a minute, because that's what year we're in. Right now, that is. We're playing nineteen sixty six. Forty eight years ago. Think about that for a second. I was sitting there this morning and it hit me. 2024. Well, so I was planning a trip and someone said, well, you may have to wait till 2025. That was when it hit me. And greetings to Ben and to Rick. Yes, I saw that too. Carl Erskine, the Oisk, 97. So R.I.P. Carl Erskine. Erskine, of course, was famous for, in 1953 World Series, he broke the record for strikeouts in a World Series. It was later broken by several other pitchers, Koufax, Gibson, Someone may have even broken Gibson's record. I'm not sure about that. It was 17. That was Gibson. Now let's get the lineup so we'll get this game started here today. For Atlanta, Felipe Alou in center field leading off. Lee Thomas moved up to the two spot. He's at first base. Hank Aaron, of course, in the three spot in right field. Joe Torrey, the catcher, hits in the cleanup spot. Rico Cardi's in left today, hitting fifth. Eddie Matthews at third base, hit sixth. Dennis Menke, the shortstop, hit seventh. Woody Woodward's at second base, hitting eighth. And Blassen Game, the pitcher, bats ninth. The Astros will have John Bateman catching uh, Durker. Felix Mantilla at first base, his first start of the season. Joe Morgan and Sonny Jackson up the middle. Bob Aspromani at third with the outfield Left to right of Lee May, Jimmy Wynn, and Nicholson. And Ben says 58. I'm not sure what the 58 applies to there, Ben. Oh, thank you, Kenyon. Yeah, I thought he did. So that's good to confirm that. Yeah, I don't see that being, uh, being broken. Not the way they use pitchers today. Let me roll up my sleeves here. A little cooler today. Cloudy and windy, a little chill in the air, so I'm wearing the sweater. Exactly, Rick. 
how many, I would say how many people have read that book. 58. Yes, that's, you're right. Oh my goodness, what was I saying? 48, 60, 70, 30. Yes, 58 years. Thank you, Ben. This does not bode well since I can't seem to do basic math today. <laughs> Okay, Durker is ready to work. Felipe Alou will lead things off. He comes into the ball game hitting 323, two home runs, 13 RBIs. Right-handed batter. Durker gets the sign from Bateman. Here's the windup down the pitch to Alou. It's going to be a 510 right-handed. It's a grounder to shortstop X. That will be Sonny Jackson, 3E40. Jackson into the hole. Here's the play on a 13. He's got it and throws him out one away. So nice play, Sonny Jackson, to get things started. 6-3-X, that'll go. And here's Lee Thomas now. Thomas comes into the game hitting just 198. Two homers, eight RBIs. Left-handed batter. Whoops. And we got a dice now, but it did not go far. Thomas fouls one off. Durker rubbing up a new ball now. And here's the pitch. And I've got a, another, that one counts, it's flat. Let me slide that over so you can see it. It's a three, four against a righty. It's a fly ball into right field. That's gonna be playable for Nicholson. And he'll make the catch, two down. I was going to ask how many people have read Boys this summer. It would probably be easier to ask how many people have not read it. <laughs> and there's Yankee Bob. Welcome, Bob. Absolutely, the Toy Cannon and Hammer and Hank. And speaking of Hammer and Hank... Here he is now. Hank Aaron steps to the plate. Batting just 213 on the season, but with eight home runs and 17 RBIs. Durker into the windup. The pick to Henry Aaron is a 6-8 right-handed single to three on a seven. That's going to be fielded by Mantia, who flips to Durker covering. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Durker. And after a half an inning of play, it's Atlanta, nothing, Houston coming to bat. Wade Blassen game, the lefty getting loose now. Let's give you the Astros lineup. It'll be Joe Morgan leading off at second. Sonny Jackson in the two spot, the shortstop. Jimmy Wynn, the toy cannon, hitting third in center field. Dave Nicholson in right field in the cleanup spot. Felix Mantilla gets his first start of the year at first base. He'll bat fifth. Bob Aspromani, the third baseman, hits sixth. Lee May in left hits seventh. Bateman, the catcher, hits eighth. And, of course, uh, Dricker batting ninth. And welcome to Sports Time Machine. Kenyon, I would say that, absolutely, without question. The Astros come in at 14-9. and nine. Let's compare that for a moment to their real life records. Let me pull up my league stats here. Houston playing 609 ball in real life. They had a 444 winning percentage that year. Atlanta, by contrast, a disappointing team. Remember, they started off the season very well. They were right in it, but now they're 9 and 14, a 391 percentage compared to a 525 in real life. They figured to be a contender, and they've struggled as of late. And what's of late? Well, let's look at the last 10 games. They're 3-7 and seven in their last 10 games. So they were 6-7 and seven prior to that. Houston, in their last 10, are 8-2, and two, and they are, they're on a three-game winning streak as we speak. So here's Morgan to lead things off. Blasting games ready to work. Oh, let's set the Braves defensively for you. Of course, Torrey catching Blasting game. 
Lee Thomas at first, Woodward and Menke up the middle, Eddie Matthews at third base. The outfield left to right, Rico Carde, Felipe Alou, and of course Aaron in right field. So here's Morgan now. Morgan hitting 259, one homer, eight RBIs. His 23 runs scored among the league leaders. Left-handed batter now, left on left. Passing game with the windup on a 1-7. It's a fly ball into center field. Playable for Alou, who tracks it down one away. And here's Sonny Jackson now. Houston keeping their two lefties at the top of the order, even against a left-handed starter. I wonder if you would see that today. I'm guessing probably not. Durker was an excellent pitcher, Bob. I agree, he was very underrated. As was Don Wilson. I think Wilson came along a little later. Sonny Jackson comes into the ball game hitting 319. No homers and four RBIs. Left on left. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a 2-3. Grounder to second base. Woodward has it. Throws to Thomas. And there's two down. So both pitchers looking sharp here in the early going. And here is the toy cannon. I'm, I can't really believe these numbers so far. Jimmy wins batting 407 now. Six home runs, 23 RBIs. The 23 RBIs is among the league leaders. In fact, that may even lead the league. Let's take a look at some numbers here real quick. I have to. 407 leads the league in batting. Rico Cardi second at 400. Where are the RBIs? He is third in the league in RBIs with the 23. Blasting game into the wind. That's going to be a 2-8 left-handed. Grounder to shortstop. Menke has it, throws him out, and that retires the side. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what happened to my crowd noise. So one, two, three, go the Astros in the first. Oh, did he? Whitey, the white rat. Well, rest in peace, Whitey Herzog. Whitey, a great manager, of course, and the architect of the 1982 champion St. Louis Cardinals team when he was the GM and the manager. His go-go style in Kansas City throughout the 70s. Took over in St. Louis and cleaned house and put together a championship team. Well, hello, RJL Network. Nice to meet you as well, sir. Durker ready to work now as Joe Torrey steps in to lead off the second inning. Torrey batting 345, three homers, 18 RBIs. Right-handed hitter, Durker the windup. That's going to be a 111 right-handed. A grounder to short, that's Sonny Jackson. Over to Mantia. And there's one away. Here's Cardi now, the aforementioned Cardi, batting a cool 400, second in the league to Jimmy Wynn. Four homers and 11 RBIs. Berger with the wind up and the pitch to Cardi is a 6 7 right handed. Swung on and missed strike three. First strikeout of the ball game, two down. And here's Eddie Matthews now. Matthews once again on the downside of his career by this point, but still a pretty good season. In the replay so far, hitting 240 with two homers and six RBIs. Left-handed hitter. The pitch from Durker is a 211. A grounder down to third base. As Pramani scoops it up, throws across, and the side is retired. One, two, three, go the Braves in the second.
And we're scoreless moving to the bottom of the second. Is it just me or is the crowd noise not as loud today? I didn't touch the settings on the laptop. The volume settings, I mean. Of course, I'm not wearing my hearing aids, so it could be that. Here's Nicholson now. Nicholson leading off the bottom of the second for the Astros. Nicholson comes into this game hitting 356, 16 for 45. He's got three home runs and six RBIs. Blasting game gets the sign now. Here's the pitch, a 2-4 against the lefty. A grounder to shortstop. That's Menke over to Thomas. And that's the first out of the inning. Here's Felix Mantilla now, getting his first start of the season. Let's check his numbers. Mantilla has played in one game, has no official at-bats. He walked. Right-handed hitter. Since it's his first start, let's look at his card. 219 and 151 at-bats. 280 on base, 371 slugging. He did have six home runs, so he's got some pop, as you can see on the card, although more of it's against right-handers, interestingly enough. He stands in from the right side. Blasting game, rounds and deals. It's going to be a 2-6 left-handed. Double to 10 on a 12. He'll settle for a long single, and Felix Mantilla has his first hit of the young season. Somewhere along the line, there it is. Mantilla, one of those 220 guys, not a threat to steal. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here's Bob Aspermani. Aspermani hitting just 191, three homers, 11 RBIs. Right handed batter, Mantilla taking a cautious lead from first. Blast and game will look over there now from the stretch. That's going to be a 2-5 left-handed. Fly ball into left field. Playable for Cardi. Cardi backing up a few steps and makes the catch. Two down, and here's Lee May. May hitting 269. Three homers, nine RBIs. Hit a walk-off home run earlier. Left on left now. From the stretch, it's going to be a 6-6 six, six left-handed, a fly ball into left field. Lee May lofts it the other way. Cardi comes in a bit now and makes the catch to retire the side. So no runs, one hit, one left. And we're through two innings, starting off once again as a pitcher's duel. We are scoreless. Let me refresh this. It's not as it normally is. Okay, I missed something there. My apologies. And the Braves will come to bat in the third inning in a scoreless ball game. Here's Menke now. Menke comes into the game hitting 293, four home runs, 14 RBIs, which is second on the ball club to Aaron. Durker gets the side. The round up and the pitch, a 6-11 right-handed. That's going to be a grounder to short. Jackson will take it. Throw to Mantilla. And there's one down. And here's Woody now. Woody comes in at 267. No homers, but nine RBIs. Right-handed hitting middle infielder. Durker the windup on the pitch. It's going to be a 3-9 right-handed. Grounder down to third base. Aspermane, sure-handed Bob, grabs it and throws him out. And Durker's just sailing along so far. And here's the pitcher, Blassen game. Left-handed batter. 3-W. Pitch from Durker, a 4-5 to the lefty. Tapper to first base. Mantilla has it, and he'll take it to the bag. And that does it. 1-2-3 go the Braves. 
And there's Kurt Miller. Welcome, Kurt. Good to see you. It is, huh, Bob? I don't know why that is. I haven't messed with any of the settings. Pretty good, Rick. I am at, uh, oh heck, let's take a look where I am on the schedule here with that. That one's sailing along, of course. I am currently playing, oh, I can't open that with the stats opened. 218 National League games have been played. 256 American League games. And that shouldn't be at all surprising. So yeah, I'm way ahead of the 66 replay. But when you figure that I can play six games on Windows and the time it takes me to roll one game here, <laughs> you can see why. Blasting game is set to go as we move to the bottom of the third. It'll be John Bateman to lead off. The Astros' right-handed hitting catcher comes in at 273. Three home runs, 10 RBIs. Blasting game, the windup. Here's the pitch to Bateman now. It's a 6-5 right-handed tapper down to shortstop. That's Menke. Over to Thomas, one down. And that'll bring up Durker. Durker. A 6N, so he's got N power, a right-handed batter, good hitting pitcher. Here's the pitch from Durker now. It's going to be a 1-6 ground ball to second base. Woodward has it. Sidearm flip to Thomas, and quickly there are two down. Back to the top of the order and little Joe Morgan. Morgan flew to center his first time up. And you know, all I did, Bob, was move it to a different part. So I must have been at one of the quiet parts. There's the pitch to Morgan. It's going to be a 3-8 lefty. And he draws the walk, which Morgan was so good at. Morgan on with speed. He's a star 15. Let's check the battery now. Blasten game of plus two. Tory a zero, that would make him a 17. Held, he's a 15, and he will be held. And with two outs, why not try to get into scoring position? So he's going to try for the lead. Four through six, he's out on a 12. He does not get the lead, and here's the next pitch to Sonny Jackson. That's a 1-11 left-handed. Pops him up. Woodward calling, and he's got it, and that will retire the side. Whoops. Wrong spot. No runs, no hits, one left on. And we are scoreless through three innings of play. Good information on Mantia from Kurt Miller there. Was that in this season, Kurt? 1966, he hurt his arm and shoulder, I assume you mean. Yes, RJL, we were talking about Erskine at the start of the broadcast. And Sports Time Machine is using the 64 Mantia card. So 64. Who was he with then? I'm guessing not Houston. And he's 89 years young, lives in the northwest side of Milwaukee. So some good stuff on Mantia as he gets his first start of the year here in our replay. Larry Durker ready to go to work in the fourth. Top of the order for Atlanta. Felipe Alou to lead things off. He grounded a short his first time up. Durker the wind up and the pitch. It's gonna be a 4-4 right-handed fly to center field X. That's a win. Win a 3E10 as he heads back on his horse now. 
On a 13, he just does catch up with it. Nice running catch by Jimmy Wynn. So Alou flies out to his opposite number in center, one away. And here's Lee Thomas now. Thomas flew to right his first time up. Standing in from the left side, Durker gets his sign. Here's the wind-up and the pitch to Thomas. It's going to be a 1-8. Base hit into right field. Line drive single by Thomas, and the Braves have their first hit of the ball game. So Lee Thomas, a one-out single, and here comes Henry Aaron, Joe Torrey on deck. Aaron grounded to first, his first time up. I like that, Alex, and welcome, by the way. Win on a Schwinn. Boy, I'm going to have to try to remember that. From the stretch, the pitch to Hammer and Hank, 2-6. He struck him out. Oh, my goodness, what a pitch by Durker. Froze, Aaron. Must have been looking for something else, and here comes Torrey. Joe Torrey grounded to short his first time up. Thank you, STM Boston. Is that the card that mashes lefties? Yes, it is. Yep. I think that card's in the ATG set on Stratomatic Online, 365. Check that out if you haven't. It's a blast. I've got five teams on 365 going right now, including one in the Barnstormers tournament. Here's Torrey, two away, man on first. Dirk is on the stretch. It's going to be a 6-12 right-handed. It's a grounder to first base X. Mantilla gets his first X chance, a 4-E-16. And here's the roll on the play. On a six, he's not going to get that. That's down for a base hit. Thomas will hold up at second. So two singles in the inning. First and second, two away. And here is Rico Cardi. Came into the game hitting 400 and struck out in the second. Durker staring in now. Runners take their lead. From the stretch, Mr. Rico Cardi. 6-5. Fly ball into left. Can of corn for Lee May. Settles under it now. And gloves it to retire the side. So no runs. A pair of hits. Two left on. And it's still scoreless as we move to the bottom of the fourth. Yeah. Baseball cards on the bicycle. I'm guilty of having a mantle in there in my time. Don't worry, it wasn't the rookie card or anything, so I don't have to lose any sleep over that. I think it was a 68 or 69 card. Most likely, and I'm just guessing. I don't really know. Blasting and game ready to work here. Heart of the order for Houston as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Toy Cannon deleted off, followed by Nicholson and Mantia. Jimmy Wynn, grounded to short his first time up. That's how we did our draft, is using that list. Salary cap. Oh, that's interesting, STM. That makes a lot of sense. My Keeper League draft started in, on 365 as well, in the first round still. 12-team league. So here's Wynn to lead off the fourth. I could do a whole broadcast just on all my teams and projects. Seriously, it's, it's insane. I don't think even you guys would believe the amount of teams I have going. Blessing game of the Pitch to win is a 5 6 right handed swung on and missed strike three, and down goes Jimmy Wynn. Lassen game picks up his first strike out of the ball game, and here's a Dave Nicholson. Nicholson 0 for 1. 
Blasting game set now. Here's the Mickelson. It's going to be a 5-7 right-hander. A single to three on an 11. That liner is speared by Woodward. So a soft liner right into the glove of Woody. And there's two away. And here's Felix Mantilla now. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear. Mantilla has the only Astro hit of the ball game so far. Single back in the second. And welcome to Doug Hunt. Greetings, sir. Blasting game winds and deals. Pitch to Mantilla, a 6-3 right-handed. Grounded down to third base. Eddie Matthews has this one over to Thomas. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Blasting game. So both pitchers very much on their game so far. And we are scoreless through four. And I feel like I've said that before. <laughs> That's right, man. Simple daily planner. I had to wash dishes today, though, but this this will blow your minds. Okay, April April 13th of last year, I put down my first rent on this apartment. April 18th, I moved in for good. I was staying in a motel or a hotel. This is the, I'm 67 years old. This is the first time in my entire life that I've ever had a dishwasher. It's true. Now that I'm used to it, I don't know how the hell I did without it. Durker is ready to work as we move along to the fifth inning in a scoreless contest. Matthews 0 for 1. Durker staring in. The wind up and the pitch. That's going to be a 3-9 against the right-hander. A two-hopper to second. Woodward backhands it. Throws to Thomas. One down. Whoops, sorry, Morgan, psh, what am I doing? Morgan backhands it, throws to Mantillo one down. I beg your pardon. See, I get distracted and lose my train of thought. That's what happens. I, I'm, I'm very sorry. Forget who's on defense. Okay, here's Menke now. Menke grounder to short his first time up. Durker gets his sign. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. That's going to be a 1-7 right-hander. A single to six, and on a one, that's down for a base hit. So Menke with a base hit. Menke aboard with one down, and here comes Woody. Woody, another favorite of mine from my youth. He's 0 for 1 today. Durker from the stretch. That's going to be a 3-2, and he hits him on a 1. Holy crap. This is going to be bad. That's the uh, hit-by-pitch on a 1. Somebody's getting ejected, and here's the roll. On a 15, they're both thrown out of the game. So Woodward, hit by the pitch, charges the mound. A bench-clearing brawl ensues. And when the dust settles... Let's see what's going on down here. Yep, Shag Crawford has thrown Woodward and Durker out of the ball game. Oh my goodness, what a shame. Exactly, STM, it is a house rule. Things calming down now. Woodward tossed. Durker tossed. This does not bode well for Houston. Let's see who they're going to bring in. Under the circumstances, this pitcher is going to get all the time he needs to loosen. Who hasn't been used? We need a long man. Looking at some options here. It could be Taylor. Uh, 
That's who it's going to be. Ron Taylor is going to come on and get loose. Yes, to explain the rule, if the D20 comes up a one on a hit by a pitch, roll the 20 sided again, one through seven, the pitcher is ejected. Eight through 14, the batter charged the mound and he's ejected. 15 through 20, both are ejected. Usually one of the managers gets thrown out of this situation too, but that doesn't really matter in this kind of a game. Okay, so we have Woodward ejected, so they'll need a new infielder for him. Menke will stay at short, so we need a second base, but that's going to be Frank Bowling. Bowling will come in and run and take over at second base. He's a 3E16, and so a little bit better defensively. Durker ejected. So he ends up, I was going to say he can't even qualify for the win. On the other hand, nobody scored yet. Four and a third for Durker. He only allowed three hits, so Durker... That's really a shame. This is, the, this is the first time this has happened where I've regretted it. He walked no one. He hit a batter, of course, just now. And two Ks, and here's Taylor. Oh, well, you know, you make your bed and you lie in it, right? Man on, one away. Here's Blassen game. Blassen game now a D bunter. Oh, that's tough. He's gonna lay it down. That's gonna be an eight on a D, and he bunts into the force play. That goes three six on the sack, attempted sack. All hell breaking loose here in this score sheet, especially in this box right here. And here's a Lou now with two down. Taylor gets his sign. Pitch to a Lou, a 6 6 right handed, swung on and missed strike three. So Taylor comes in and does a nice job cooling things down a bit. No runs to hit, one man left. And through four and a half. That's true. On the other hand, Ben, the pitcher's the one that threw at him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen that one. I, I, I cringed when I saw it, Ben. Let me tell you right now. Those are the kind of games that makes me crazy scoring-wise. Yes, and was there intent? Excellent question. And as usual, that's in the perception of the umpire. I'm fairly sure most of the Houston fans in the ballpark would disagree. So here's Aspermani to lead off the bottom of the fifth. We're still scoreless, remember. Blassen game gets the side. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a 4-4 right hand. It's a grounder to third X. That'll be Eddie Matthews. Matthew is a 4E27. And here's the play on a 13E rating. It's that dreaded 5 on a 27, and Matthews boots it. That'll be an error on Eddie Matthews. So E5. Aspermani's aboard. And that'll bring up Lee May. Left on left now, Blossom game working from the stretch. 
Here's the pitch for May. That's going to be a 4-11 left-handed. Base hit into right field. That's open. Astromani could try to go. 1 through 12 to third, 14. Aaron a minus 2, 12. He's going to hold up. So Astromani, respecting the arm of Hank Aaron, holds up at second. And the Astros have something going here in the bottom of the inning. Blossom game and S6 as far as endurance goes. And here's Bateman now. First out at third. Yeah, you got it. I can see what you mean now, Ben. Yeah, not at 1 through 12, that's for sure. Here's Bateman now. Bunt situation, but with the pitcher on deck, he's going to swing away. The pitch from Blasting Game, a 1 8. That's a base hit into right field. That's to Aaron again. Astromani can try to score. 12 minus 2, 10. He's going to hold up again. Astromani, not a great runner. Aaron gets on it quickly and throws it in, and the bases are loaded. So bases loaded and nobody out. And now we have activity in the Atlanta bullpen. Clay Carroll throwing. And the pitcher, we need a new pitcher's card. Taylor is a 2W. It's Ron Taylor. Infield double play depth. Taylor, a 2W right handed batter. Blasting game, full windup. Pitch to Taylor, 2 11. He struck him out. So a big strike out there by Blasting game with the bases loaded. And now two left handers in a row coming up Joe Morgan followed by Sonny Jackson. So Blasting game in a hell of a jam here. He's trying to get out of it. Daring in now to get the sign. Here's the pitch to Little Joe on a 2-11. Grounder to first base C. That's gonna, everybody's going to move up on that. Knocked down by Thomas. His only play is to blast in game covering, and everyone will move up, including Astromani, who will score an unearned run. May to third, Bateman to second. That'll be an RBI for Joe Morgan. And it's one to nothing, Houston. Second and third, two down as Sonny Jackson comes to bat. Sonny, 0 for 2 so far in the game. Blasting game trying to stay in this game and get out of the jam with just the one run allowed. And here's the pitch to Jackson. That's going to be a 4-3 left-hander to fly to right field X. That's Hank Aaron, a 1-E-4, about as good as you can be out there. And here's the play. Aaron on his horse on a 2, makes a running catch in the corner. Uh, unbelievable catch. Only a 1 could have made that catch. That will go down as a web gem for Hank Aaron, and it saves two runs. Oh, my God, what a play by Hank Aaron. And it's a 9x exclamation point, signifying that that is indeed a web gem. What a play by Hank Aaron to save two runs. So the Astros settle for one, an unearned run. And after five complete, it's Houston one, Braves nothing. And it feels like it's more, mostly because of the ejection and the the on-the-field melee that broke out there in the top of the fifth. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I hear you, Ben. Isn't it great? Here's Taylor now. Did a nice job coming in to relieve the ejected Durker in the top of the fifth. It'll be Thomas, Aaron, and Torrey due for Atlanta. 
Taylor gets the sign from Bateman now. Here's the windup and the pitch to Lee Thomas. That's going to be a 5-10 left-handed. A grounder to shortstop X. That'll be Sonny Jackson. Jackson, a 3-E-40. Jackson into the hole. Here's the fly. On a 7, he's got it and throws him out. Nice play, Jackson. So Jackson's been tested at least twice on the X chart. Yep, twice. And he's made the play both times. And here's Henry Aaron now. Hammer and Hank, 0 for 2 so far today. Taylor gets the sign. And here's the wind up and the pitch on a 2-6. Struck him out again. So Aaron struck out twice, although the first one was against Durker, to be fair. Taylor fans him here. Two down, nobody on, and here's Tory. Tory's one for two today. Taylor getting the sign now. Here's the wind up on the pitch. One seven, swung on, and missed strike three. So a nice job by Taylor. That's his third strikeout since coming on in relief. A one, two, three inning for Ron Taylor. And it's still one to nothing. Now, many of you regulars know that the bullpen has been a sore spot for this Astro team this year. Even the closer, Claude Raymond, has had his struggles. Three-time gold glover, you bet, Ben. He could do it all. He could run. He could steal a base. He wasn't a big stealer on this card, I don't think. Star 19, but only a 7 for the lead. 1 through 16 runner. Yes, not your average home run hitter, that's for sure. A true five-tool player. Of course, I think it was because of Willie Mays that that phrase was even coined, the five-tool player, right? And still the, the epitome of that statement, or that phrase, the five-tool player, when I think of that, I immediately think of Willie Mays. And then I moved to Washington in 1989, and a fellow named Ken Griffey Jr. came along. Another five-tool player. Blassen game entering his first inning of potential fatigue, and he'll face the heart of the Houston lineup, Wynn Nicholson and Mantia. Blassen game gets the sign. Here's the wind-up and the pitch to the toy cannon on a 1-9. It's a high fly ball to left field and deep. Cardi backing up on the track makes the catch for the out. So loud out by Jimmy Wynn. And here's Nicholson. Nicholson 0 for 2. That's a 6-8 to the right-hander. That's going to be a base hit into left field for Nicholson. So Dave Nicholson aboard with a one-out single here in the bottom of the sixth. Not a threat to run. And here's Felix Mantia. Mantia 1 for 2 today. Blossom game working out of the stretch now. That's going to be a 6-10 right-handed. It's a grounder to short X. It could be two. But this is, remember, this is Menke, a 4-E-38. Hold your breath on this one. Here's the play on A-20. He makes the play, shovels to Woodward, but that's all they'll get. So that's going to be a force play. That's going to go 6-4-X. Nicholson forced. And Mantia's aboard. And that'll bring up Aspermani. Bob Aspermani, 0 for 2, reached on an error and scored the game's only run in the fifth. Blassen game checks the runner now from the stretch. Bob is a 3 4, pops him up right in his good column. Look at that. Menke waiting for it, and he'll take it. And that's it. No runs a hit, one left. And we're through six innings. In the Astrodome, where it's one to nothing Houston. I'll be darned, Kenyon. That's some great information there from Kenyon Gray. It was DeRocher 
who coined the five-tool phrase about Willie. Ron Taylor coming out again. He's worked one and two-thirds. He'll be facing Cardi, Matthews, and Menke as we move to the seventh. Anybody's game. I'm still having an issue with this. I feel like I'm having an issue with this crowd noise still, and I did nothing to the settings. It's very weird. Well, that's plenty clear. Here's Cardi to lead things off. Rico, 0 for 2. Taylor gets the sign now from Bateman. Here's the windup. Costa Rico, 3-6 right-handed. It's a fly ball into left field. May backing up a few steps, and he'll take it for the out, one down. And here's Eddie Matthews. Matthews 0 for 2 today. Grounded to third, grounded to second. Taylor getting the sign. Here's the windup and the pitch to Eddie Matthews. That's going to be a 4-8 left-handed, and that's ripped into the right center gap. That's going to roll to the wall. Matthews rounds. And heads into second with a double. And the tying run is in scoring position with one down. So a huge double from Eddie Matthews. Matthews is a slow runner, but it's too early in the game to take him out. And here's Menke now. Dennis Menke, one for two. Taylor checks the runner. Now the windup. Menke. It's going to be a 5-6 right-handed fly ball into left field. That's going to hang up there for Lee May, and he'll take it two away. And it will be up to Frank Bowling. Bowling, his first at bat of the game. He came on to replace Woody Woodward, who was tossed from the game in the fifth inning. Bowling played in this game in real life, but as a pinch hitter. He's hitting 281, just 9 for 32. No home runs and four RBIs. I thought Hamilton couldn't throw, Kurt. At least that was my impression. Did I get the wrong impression on Billy? Here's Bowling, runner at second is the tying run, two away. The pitch from Taylor is a 1-6, he pops him up. That's going to be Jackson. He's got it, and the side is retired. So no runs, a hit one left. And it's one to nothing at Houston. Blasting game coming out in what will certainly be his last inning as he's due to bat leadoff in the eighth. So if he gets in trouble here, remind me to double switch. <laughs> I'm laughing at Dave Little's comment. Yes, indeed. The modern day Billy Hamilton was a one tool player. Yes, he could run. The A's have a guy like that now, at least so far. He may hit, I don't know, that Ruiz kid who set the rookie stolen base record last year with 67. So far, he hasn't shown he can hit. Blast and game will start the inning. Chi-Chi Olivo has joined Clay Carroll in the Atlanta bullpen. So here's May, one for two. Blasting game gets the side from Torrey now. Here's the windup on the pitch to May. It's going to be a 4-6 left-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. Blasting game showing he's still got a little left. And John Bateman will be the hitter. And here's the windup on the pitch to Bateman on a 1-2 liner speared by Eddie Matthews. So a we'll line out to the max, 1-2. 
And here's the pitcher, Taylor. They're going to send up a batter for Taylor in a close ball game. He's given him two and two-thirds. So he did a nice job coming on in relief of Durker. They'll go to Claude Raymond to try to nail it down. And against Blasson game, it won't be Gentile. The Astros will bring Chuck Harrison off the bench. Two bat for Taylor. So Taylor did a nice job. What's Chuck Harrison done on the replay? He's hitting 355, 11 for 31. One homer, five runs batted in. Two down, nobody on. Last in game trying to finish this inning. The wind up and the pitch to Harrison. That's a 110 left hander. Fly ball into right field and playable for Henry Aaron, who glides under it and makes the catch to retire the side. So Blasting Game finishes strong with a 1 2 3 seventh. And we go to the eighth inning. Astros 1, Braves nothing. And on comes Claude Raymond. Defense for Houston. They could probably do better in the out in left field. Not much better, though, I'll tell you that. Well, they can bring in Rusty Staub, and that's what they're going to do. So Lee May will give way to Rusty Staub. Three E thirteen with a minus four. The Astros, you might remember, often started when Nicholson started. They played him in right and Staub in left. Most of us strap players would do it the other way around, right? But since that's what Hatton was doing, and since it's a defensive replacement for May, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it that way. So Staub will take over in left field. Claude Raymond now. Okay, let's take a look at this for a minute. Led the club in saves in real life with 16. 3.13 ERA over 92 innings. And the replay, however, it's been a weird year for Claude so far. He's 2-2 two and two with five saves, but a high 6.75 ERA in 13 and a third innings of work. So Raymond certainly has not pitched up to his card, at least so far. In the eighth, Atlanta will start off with a pinch hitter for Blasting Cave. Blasson game worked seven innings. Allowed only four hits. Another great game by Blasson game. Just the one run, and that was unearned. He walked only one. He doesn't strike out many, but he struck out two, three, excuse me, there's three. Let's check that again. And let's see who they're going to get loose. They're going to go with Chi Chi Olivo. So we'll have a pinch hitter now for Blasting Game against the right hander Raymond. That's going to be Gary Geiger, the left-handed hitting outfielder.
catching up on the chat for a minute. A lot of comments now on the five tool. Cool Papa Belky, I saw that one. Ben doesn't like the disengagement and the, uh, the larger bases, I'm guessing. That's fine. Billy Hamilton stole 100 bases four times. He was a one defensive outfielder. Seven homers was very good in the dead ball era. My, the, only, the only thing I brought up was the arm. I, the cards I've seen, he's a plus two or a plus three arm. And of course, the true definition of five tool, you gotta be able to throw. That's one of the tools, right? Oscar Charleston. Oh God, now that now there you go, Kurt. Bill James once wrote that Oscar Charleston might very well be the greatest player of all time. So if you don't know anything about Oscar Charleston, I encourage you to Google him and do a little research. And there's Franklin Long. Welcome, Franklin. Franklin's been busy. That's okay. Geiger I've used many times in, in the all-time greats on Strat 365 as a backup outfielder because he's normally just what you see here, a solid two with a decent error range in all three positions. Left-handed batter. Geiger on the season, 233, just seven for 30. He does have one home run. Claude Raymond, ready to work now. Here's the windup and the pitch to Gary Geiger. That's going to be a 5-9 left-handed. Fly ball into center. Wind drifting under it. And there's one away. So Geiger retired. And that'll bring up Felipe Alou. Felipe 0 for 3 today. Atlanta running out of outs in a tight ball game. Raymond gets the sign from Bateman now. The windup. Felipe. That's a 3-11 right-handed. A tapper down to first base. Mantilla will take it himself. And there's two down. And here's Lee Thomas now. And boy, Lee Thomas would love to do something here if for no other reason than to get Hank Aaron to the plate. Thomas, one for three. Raymond staring in. Here's the wind-up. Here's the pitch to Lee Thomas. A 5-7 lefty swung on and missed strike three. So Raymond looking good in his first inning of work. A 1-2-3 inning. And it's still one nothing Houston in a nail-biter. And another great close game. Holy cow. Last in game is gone. Olivo coming on. 4.23 in 66 innings. In the replay so far, he's been their best pitcher. He's been in four games with one save and has not allowed a run over six and a third innings. In fact, you might remember earlier in the year when I got frustrated with Clay Carroll and deemed Olivo and uh, Billy O'Dell co-closers co for Atlanta. Well, it hasn't helped them much. <laughs> They're 9 and 14 now. There's a long way to go in this season. Plenty of time to right the ship. Top of the order for Houston in the bottom of the eighth. Joe Morgan will lead it off. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Yeah, I agree there, sports time. Didn't really have the arm. But he was a dynamic frickin' player, that's for sure. Especially when he added the power to his game. Best leadoff man ever? Let's throw that out to the floor. Ricky Henderson I'm referring to, of course. Here's Olivo ready to work now. The pitch to Morgan. That's going to be a 6-6 six, six against the lefty. He pops him up. That's going to be bowling to make the catch. And there's one down. And here's Sonny. 
Sonny Jackson, 0 for 3. Olivo in the windup. The pitch to Jackson, a 5 8 left handed fly ball into right and playable for Aaron. Aaron glides under it, and there's two away. And here's the toy cannon now. Cannon's been quiet today, 0 for 3. Came in leading the league in hitting, third in the league in RBIs. Olivo checks the side. Now the windup. Pitch to Jimmy Wynn, a 4-6, swung on and missed strike three. A nice job by Olivo to keep the game close. And Jimmy Wynn for the first time in this young replay, showing signs of cooling off a little bit. And we go to the ninth. And excellent information from Kurt Miller there on Olivo. The first player from the Dominican. Wow, and he died at 48. Man, he got on, he stole, and then he added power to his game. I mean, what more do you want from the leadoff, man? And I'm jumping around again, I know, but Ricky Henderson we're talking about again, of course. Claude Raymond comes out to pitch his second inning. He's got to go through the heart of the order, holding a one to nothing lead. Henry Aaron with Joe Torrey, Rico Cardi, if anyone gets on, Eddie Matthews. Raymond staring in. Now Aaron's 0 for 3 today, struck out twice, so he's been quiet as well. And that's outside for a ball. Raymond gets the sign from Bateman now. Here's the next pitch to Henry Aaron. That's going to be a 5-9 right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. And Aaron strikes out three times in a row. Boy, you won't see that very often. And here's Torrey now. Torrey one for three today. Claude Raymond gets the sign from Bateman. Here's the windup. The pitch to Joe Torrey. 6'6", six, six, right-hander. A double on a two, but on a 10, that's going to hang up in center. Wind drifting back and makes the catch. And the Braves are down to their final out in the form of Rico Cardi. Cardi came into the game hitting 400, but he's 0 for 3 today. Raymond stares in to get the sign now. Crowd on its feet. The windup. The pitch to Cardi. 6-3, right-handed, base hit up the middle, and there's still life for the Braves. It's two-out single by Cardi, and now he represents the tying run. We may want to look at a pinch runner here. The question is, do they have anybody? They do. They've got Felix. They could bring Felix Mion off the bench to run for Cardi. He's a 14. And that's what we're going to do, representing the tying run, will be Felix Mion. Mion, a star 18 stealer. Raymond, however, a minus four hold. Bateman, a zero. So he's a 14 not held. He will be held on, making him a 12. And Eddie Matthews will indeed come to bat. So runner held at first, taking his lead. Raymond to throw over there. Me on back to the bag. Eddie Matthews doubled his last time up. One for three today. Raymond staring in to get the sign from the strip. Pitch to Eddie Matthews. A 5'11". Fly to right field X. That's going to be Nicholson. A 3'11". Nicholson on his horse. And here's the play. On a one, he's not going to get it. It's a three-star double, and the game is tied. Holy crap, can you believe it? Double three stars. Mion speeds all the way around the bases to score the tying run. What a freaking ball game. Holy forking shirt balls. You'd say he's the go-ahead run, Matthews, pinch run for him, but this bench is about out of options here. Who would play third base? I 
Menke can move to third. But they don't have another shortstop. Mion could stay in the game at third. He just came in to score. That's where the left fielder would be. I'm going to leave Matthews in. We can't take everybody out. And here's Menke. And Raymond blows up again. He got the first two outs easily enough. Then a single and a double, and the game is tied. And here's the pitch now to Menke on a 6-6, six, six, double to two. On a five, that's going to hold up. Win racing back and makes the catch to retire the side, but the Braves tie it up. A run on two hits, they leave one. And we go to the bottom of the ninth in a 1-1 tie. So where Mion was, I need a outfielder. And that's going to be a problem, too. That's going to have to be computer-only card, Marty Keogh going into left. He's a 3E25 with a zero. So Marty Keogh takes over in left. He played in this game in real life. He pinch hit. Good point, Kurt. But they were kind of out of... They were out of corner outfielders. You had Staub, who already came in for car for uh, excuse me, for Lee May, who's even worse than Nicholson. The only other guy who could play left and right is Ron Brand, who's also a four. They really didn't have anybody better. And frankly, on that roll, hell, it would have taken a one to make the play. So Olivo, for his second inning of work, he's going to be looking at Nicholson. Mantilla, maybe, probably. And Bob Aspromani, 1-1 one, one in the bottom of the ninth. Dave Nicholson's one for three today. His inability to make the play allowed the game to become tied. And here's the pitch from Alito. That's going to be a 5-7 right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three, and down goes Nicholson. So while they fit Nicholson for the goat horns, here's Felix Mantilla. Mantilla, one for three. He's got power against righties. Olivo winds and deals on a 2-8. He walks him. A one-out walk to Mantilla. He's a 12. That's going to have to be good enough. They do have another first baseman. I'm reticent to use I'm reticent to use many more bench players at this juncture. If this game goes into extra innings, they're gonna need these guys to pinch hit. So Mantilla takes his lead from first, and here's Bob Aspromani now. Bob's 0 for 3. Olivo working from the stretch. Here's the pitch to ask for Monty now on a 3-8. It's a grounder to third. That's going to be two. It's Matthews to bowling to Thomas, and we're going to extra innings.
And there you have it. Another nail biter. Raymond, a two rated reliever for endurance. He's going to be facing bowling. The pitcher's spot and Felipe Alou. And before we go to the 10th, I'm going to have to take a short break. I'll just use the restroom and I'll be right with you. And we're back. So extra innings here at the Astrodome. Most of the just under 29,000 still in the park. Frank Bowling will lead things off in the 10th. It will be Claude Raymond entering his third inning of work. In the second, his second inning of work, he gave up two hits. They better get somebody up behind him. Chris Zachary begins throwing. Here's Bowling to lead things off. Bowling 0 for 1. Raymond into the wind. It's a 5-9 right-handed. Struck him out. Well, you can't really fault Raymond for this one. And now Atlanta will send up a pinch hitter for Olivo. Whoa, Olivo, two innings. Retired all six batters to face him with a walk and two Ks. Stav Bateman and the pitcher coming up. Billy O'Dell will be coming on. And we need a batter against Raymond. So, so I mean, they're down to three guys on the bench. It's going to have to be De La Hose. De La Hose will bat for the pitcher. One away in the 10th. <clears throat> Excuse me. De La Hose just two for six on the season. Right-handed batter. <clears throat> Raymond, the windup and the pitch. De La Hose is a three-six right-handed. Tapper down to third. That's Aspermane. Two Mantia. There's two down. And that'll bring up Felipe Alou. Felipe 0 for 4 today. Raymond the Wayne. 
where's the pitch? It's a 4-8 right-handed, and he walks him. Two-out walk issued, and that fatigues Raymond. No, it does not. One more has. He needs one more to fatigue. Excuse me. I beg your pardon. A two-out walk to Raymond. He'll face Thomas. Lee Thomas, one for four. Zachary ready. Here's the pitch to Lee Thomas. From the stretch, one five. Base hit into center field. Alua, one through 14, rounding. Win a zero. He will hold up. There's no point making the third out at third base. And that does fatigue Raymond. And here comes Grady Hatton. And he's going to go to Zachary. So a lot of action in this game. A lot of bench players used. A lot of relievers used. And they're going to do the double switch when they bring in Zachary. You only wonder a place is Mantia. So that's what we're going to do. The pitcher will go in Mantia's spot. The new first baseman, Gentile, will go into the nine spot. Three e eighteen at first. <clears throat> Excuse me. That will be the pitcher's spot. And here's Zachary taking his warm ups. Zachary on the replay, he's been in six games, two and one with a 1.17 ERA in seven and two thirds innings. First and second, two down, and you bet you, Kurt, look who's coming up. Henry Aaron, 0 for 4, struck out three times today. First and second, two down in a tie ball game. Zachary, the sign from Bateman now. From the stretch, the pitch to Henry Aaron is a 2-7. He pops him up. Jackson under it, and that's the inning. So Aaron, very quiet today, goes 0 for 5. No runs, a hit, two left on. And we go to the bottom of the 10th in a 1-1 game. New pitcher. For Atlanta, it'll be Billy O'Dell, the lefty. O'Dell has been in seven games, one and one with one save, a 1.29 in seven innings. Kind of a backwards left-hander. Let's make sure we can all see this now. I may have to move things over. All right, Odell is ready to go. And Rusty Staub will be leading it off for Houston. Staub came in to take over in left field for Lee May. This will be his first at bat of the game. Rusty Staub comes into the game at 313, one home run and 17 RBIs. Left on left now as Odell goes into his windup. 
He pitched a stop on a 4-4. Four, four. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's catcher's card X. Right in the middle of two long balls. <clears throat> and that's going to be Tori, a 2-E-7. And for Tori, here's the roll on the play. 2-E-7 on a 20. It's a foul out to the catcher. That's right, Kurt. Everyone plays. Here's Bateman now. Bateman one for three today. Billy O'Dell getting the sign. Here's the windup. The pitch to Bateman is a 6-7 fly into center field. Playable for Alou, who's right there to catch it. And there's two down. And that will bring up Gentile. Inserted into the game in the double switch. Left on left. Gentile came into the game at 270. Still no home runs on the season, but 11 RBIs. Odell gets the sign, the windup. The pitch, a 2-8, swung on and missed strike three. And we're going to the 11th. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Both teams running out of players, that's for sure. Chris Zachary will come out for his second inning. Well, not his full second inning of work. He's pitched a third of an inning. Tori Keo and Matthews do for Atlanta. Tori to lead things off. Joe Torrey, one for four today. Right-handed batter. Zachary gets his sign now. The wind-up to Torrey. That's going to be a 2-8 right-handed. The tapper down to second. Joe Morgan has it. Flips to Gentile. For the first out of the inning. And here's Marty Keough now. Keo came in defensively for Cardi, who was pinch run for by Mion. Keo on the season, only four games, four at bats. He's 0 for 4. Left handed hitter. The pitch from Zachary, a 5 6 to the lefty, and he walks him. And that's really the only thing Keo is good at. You can see everything on his card is a walk. I said he was 0 for 4. No, that's his first walk as well. So Keo aboard with the one out walk. 1 to 13 runner, no threat to steal. And here's Eddie Matthews. Matthews 2 for 4, a pair of doubles. Zachary staring at the runner now. Comes set from the stretch. The pitch to Eddie Matthews is a 3-4. Ball four, he walks. Back-to-back -back walks by Zachary. And it's first and second one out. And here comes Dennis Menke. Menke's one for four. And Bateman's going out to the mound. But thank you kindly, RGL. I do appreciate that. Johnny Holstaff, yep. Okay, they've 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 conferred now. Bateman been to the crouch. First and second, one down. Here's the pitch to Men. 5-8 right-handed, double to 14. That's down for extra bases into the corner in left field. Here comes Keo around to score. Matthews can try to score. He is a 10 to left. That's Staub, a minus four gun. He is not going to try it. <laughs> but they take the lead on the RBI double by Menke.
Two to one Atlanta. Frank Bowling steps to the plate. Bowling 0 for 2. Infield in. Bowling a C butter. Zachary, the full windup, the pitch to Bowling on a 4 6, and he walks him to load the bases. The third walk of the inning issued by Zachary. And that Houston pin once again. Now, this is a tough one. <laughs> I'm not sure they want to hit for... With what's left down there, I'm not sure they want to hit for Odell. Who's due up? Morgan Jackson win. Yeah, they probably do, actually. Clay Carroll will throw. Gene Oliver is going to bat. They're going to empty all their bullets right here. Gene Oliver, the other catcher. Normally, I would not do this, but situation dictates, dictates it. Gene Oliver, just 0 for 7 on the season. He's been in four games. He's got some pop, though. And the bases are loaded. Zachary staring in. The ball lined up to pitch to Gene Oliver, a 4-10. Fly to left field. That's going to be deep enough to score another run. Caught there by Staub. Matthews will tag up and score. And it's a sack fly for Gene Oliver. So Oliver picks up a ribby. 3-1 to one Braves. And here's a Lou. Menke at second, bowling at first. Zachary from the stretch to pitch to Felipe. Three, ten, single, one star. Menke will have to hold up at third base. Oh, my goodness, and the bases are loaded again. No one throwing in the Houston pen. It's all up to Zachary. There's two outs and the base is loaded, and here's Lee Thomas, two for five. Zachary, the windup, the pitch to Thomas, 5-11. It's a high fly ball to deep right field. Nicholson back on the track at the wall and makes the catch. Ho, 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 ho. 5-11, he has the power. Homer to 12, the roll is a 15. And the side is retired. But two runs for the Braves. On two hits, there were three walks issued by Zachary. And here comes Clay Carroll. Carroll, you remember, lost the closer's job about a week ago. He's been in seven ball games, 0-3 with one save and a 6.75 ERA across 16 innings, which come to think of is really no worse than most of the numbers in the Astro pen. <laughs> and it will be the top of the order for Houston against Clay Carroll. So Odell worked just one inning, retired the side in order with a strikeout. Top of the order for Houston, it'll be Morgan, Jackson, and a win. If anybody gets on, Nicholson. Three to one. Right, Kurt. Now Nicholson catches it, right? <laughs> That's what I was thinking, actually. Here's little Joe, 0 for 3. Clay Carroll ready to work, the sign from Torrey. Here's the wind-up and the pitch to Morgan. It's a 3-9. Tapper to short. Menke will have that one. Over to Thomas. One down, and here's Sonny Jackson. Sonny's 0 for 4 today. Clay Carroll into the wind-up now. The pitch to Jackson. 
3-6 against the righty. A fly ball into right field. Can of corn for Hank Aaron. And the Astros are down to their final out. And it'll be the toy cannon. The quiet cannon today at 0 for 4. Carroll into the windup. The pitch to Jimmy Wynn. A 6-10. It's a grounder to shortstop X. Hold your breath on this one. That's going to be Menke. A 4-E38. And here's the play. On a 17, he makes the play, and that's the ball game. Nice play, Dennis Menke. And the Braves come back, trailing one to nothing most of the ball game. They end up winning it three to one, and they snap their losing streak and the Astros' winning streak. Carroll picks up the save. Zachary, one and a third. Two and two-thirds for Raymond. Zachary takes the loss. That makes him two and two. For Clay Carroll, his second save. Would that make Odell the winner? I tell you, this is one... Busy score sheet. Yes, that would make Odell the winner. Billy Odell picks up the win. He is two and one. Taylor allowed no runs. Taylor allowed one hit. No walk, struck out three. Raymond, two hit, three hits and a run. One, two strikeouts. Three strikeouts and a walk. Zachary, two hits, two runs, walked three. No strikeouts. Thank you, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And I'm in agreement there, Kurt Miller. Your chief Spokane Derby player of the game is going to be Dennis Menke. Totals on the ball game for Atlanta. Three runs, nine hits, and an error. Houston, one run, only four hits. Well, I did not realize that until just now. Last in game, a four-hitter for seven innings. And the Atlanta bullpen chimed in with four innings of hitless relief. Braves now 10 and 14. Houston drops to 14 and 10. So an excellent job by the Atlanta bullpen. Holy cow. Quite a game, gentlemen. Quite a game indeed. Join me tomorrow. I'm going to have uh, the Washington Senators at the Kansas City A's, or Athletics. That's going to be 130 Pacific. That's going to be Mike McCormick for the Senators and the young Catfish Hunter for the Athletics. So that should be fun. Hopefully I'll see you then.
In the meantime, I want to thank you guys for spending part of your afternoon with me, Spokane Steve, wishing you all a very pleasant good evening. Take care, guys.